Hey fellow gliders, welcome back. Today we're going to continue our series on time frame filtering in Glide. If you haven't yet watched the very first video, check out the link in the description below so you can get caught up with where we're currently at. So as a recap, where we left off is we have a choice component that's acting as a filter to this inline list of records, and then we are totaling the filtered list. So currently what we have is a choice component that is writing a value today, this week, this year, so forth, into a date time column. Glide is doing its magic to convert this text into an actual date where we are then relating values uh, that match this date to the records, and then we are creating a roll-up column of the total and average for those um, for those values. This works really nicely when we're looking for a singular date. Today, this year, which is uh, 2022, right? Last month, which is a particular month and date, right? A singular value. But what happens if you want to filter over a range of dates? So now we have to uh, determine two dates in order to make that relation happen. So here's how you can go about doing such. So the very first thing we need is in our work table to create two more user specific columns that are going to accept a range of dates. So I'm going to create two new columns here. I'll just add a column to the right of our time frame, and we'll call this start. It'll be a date time column. And it's going to be a user specific column here. And then I'll duplicate that and call that end. And this is going to house the start and end date of our range. All right, so maybe we want to choose a range. So in order to have a range, we need to have a start date end date. So we need a date, uh, date component here. So we'll do a date picker. And we'll, it's already going to write to our start, which is nice. So our start date of range. So now we need the end date. So I'll just duplicate the start date component and just edit the name of it and which column it's writing to. Okay. So now we have start date and end date. Now there's no way for us to do much in terms of restricting dates yet in glide. It would be nice that like if end date could only be, you know, after the start date kind of thing, best we can do is maybe display something here that says, uh, dates are invalid. If, the end date is before the start date or something like that, right? Okay, so let's say, well, let's first determine our records here. So in our revenue stream, we have everything going from January 14th to June 2nd. So as long as it's within that date range, it should pick up some of the values here, right? So let's say our start date is um, back in February 7th, and our end date is uh, June 1st. Okay. So now we have two values and we need to pull all of the records that fall between those two values. So luckily in our revenue table, we created a, um, a value for the date. We see we have the year, we have the month, we have the week and we have today or the day value. Yeah. This day value here. So we have a nice number that we can compare to the other two numbers. We just have to take this same formula here, our date today, and do that a couple of times in our work table. So we have start. I'm going to add a column to the right of that. And we're going to choose a math column. And we're going to convert this date into a num numeric value. So we can call this start value. I'm going to paste that same formula. Can I keep things easy on us? And we'll get rid of the group separator, precision one, done. All right, and we can see that February 7th turned into 2022-02-07, right? Okay, we'll duplicate that. And we'll call this end value, where the date will be the end, done. Okay, so now we have a start value and an end value. Okay, and now we need to compare these two values inside of our revenue. The easiest way to do that is to bring in these two values into the revenue table where we can make a comparison. All right, so in our revenue table, I'm gonna add two columns. I'll call this start select and 
This will be a single value column because we're going to bring in a singular value into this table. We're going to get the first from our working table and we're going to grab the start value, which will populate that start value across all rows within this table. Yeah, I'll duplicate that. We'll call this end select. And instead of the start value, we'll just grab the end value. Done. All right, so now we have a start and an end. And now we seem to compare. Does the date today fall between the select start and end? Okay, so we could say like is in range. And this will be an if then else column. And we'll say if the date today is well, I guess we have to do the reverse, okay? Because with our if then else column, we can't do nested conditions like, oh, if it's this and this, uh, an if then else column is only or conditions. So we have to think about this backwards. We have to uh, rule out dates that don't fall within the range. Hopefully Glide at some point gives us more control over if then else columns, but until then, this is what we're gonna have to do. Kind of think of it backwards. So we'll say that if the date today, um, is greater than the end date, the end value, then nothing, right? If the date today is before or is less than our start value, then nothing, else output something. Um, I guess it depends what we're trying to output. We could output a value, maybe the word range, something unique, right? And you can see that it's picking all of the dates that's fallen within that range. Good, so our formula works, our thing condition works. So now we can take this is in range value here and add it to our time frames array. All right, so I'm gonna drag my time frames array over and I'm just gonna add an item here. We'll call it range. This is in range. Done. Okay. And now we need in our work table, we need to ultimately have this selected value be the word range so we can relate it to the word range in our revenue table. So um, we'll say if the time frame is range, then range. <laughs> and I probably should keep it similar with like caps and that kind of thing, but maybe we say like select a range or select a date range, something like that. So it'll output the word range, which then should make the relation to those values. So copy, done. All right, that means that our users need to pick a value called select a range. So we can add that to our time frames list. Okay. So now they can select a date range, but we should only have the start date and end date things display when select a date range is selected, right? So I'll hide our date pickers when time frame is only, uh, or includes maybe the word range. So visible when time frame includes range, yeah. Same thing with end date. Visibility when time frame includes range. All right, so that way if they're not selecting a date range, just like today, right, then we see that. This week, this month, this year, they don't see the date range. But if they choose select a date range, then they can pick the start date and the end date, right, and then our records are filtered appropriately. So we see that there are 60 records that fall within that date range for a total of $34,249 from February 7th all the way through June 1st. Okay, so what happens then if you pick something that's outside of the date range? Maybe I pick today, 
right? August, or for maybe August 1st. This is backwards, see that? So we see that the end date is actually falling before start date. So we could display something that says like invalid date range. But regardless, you see that there are zero records that fall within that range, right? Sorry to back this up just a little bit to be like May 1st for one month. We see that there are 13 values that fall between May 1st and June 1st for that amount of dollars. One more thing to note is that what's nice about this logic is that they only need to fill out half of these ranges. So if they don't want to specify an end date, but do specify a start date, so we'll say like starts May 1st, then it'll pull everything from May 1st to the current date. So we see May 1st, and it goes pulls all the records to the current date. And same as reversed. So if we were to only select an end date, so only ends on April 1st. Right? We see from January 14th through the last record that falls before April 1st, in this case, March 23rd, and pulls the correct values appropriately. So all in all, allowing your users to select a date range for filtering purposes is not very difficult to achieve. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave me a comment below or reach out to me at Twitter at rpetito. And as always, thanks for watching.